Hey, what's going on, crypto people? <clears throat> it is your boy, D Crypto Siege, with another day in the life, in the crazy life. That is the digital asset space. What is going on, guys? Happy Monday. Happy Monday afternoon. I think this is Monday. Yes, it is Monday. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about some very, very interesting things today. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about the interviews and stuff that I've had a chance to check out. It's been really very, very interesting. And I think it's, it's kind of important to let's not forget about um, the things that are going on with Ripple and the people that are working with that company. TJ Jackson, what's good, bro? How you doing, my friend? John is in the building. What's going on, brother? Good to see you here, my friend. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Just a kind of a, like a friendly reminder, if you will. Byron Lewis, hey, what is going on, Byron Lewis? How are you? Good to see you in stream, my friend. Blockchain Maine is in the building. What's up, Siege and XRP family? How you doing, Blockchain Maine? XR Free Me is in the house. What's going on? Good day, Siege. Hope all is well. Life is good, brother. Life is good for sure. Guys, don't forget to um, smash that like on the way in. Collapse that chat real quick and hit the like button. Then come hang out in the chat. Brian Bitten is in the building. What's going on, brother? What's up, Siege? Someone's back. <laughs> no, right? Crazy. Almost 70 degrees. Absolutely crazy. Good to hear you. Good to hear that you're doing good, Byron. Derek is in the building. What's up, Derek P? Good morning from Darwin, Australia. Good morning, my friend. XRP Joe is in the building. What's going on, man? Happy Monday, Siege and XRP fam. Smash those like, guys. Yeah, absolutely. What is going on, guys? Everybody having a good day? I tell you what, uh, I am going to highlight Mr. The Digital Nomad Investor for sure. I hope you guys checked out that video he did today. Uh, well, he posted, I guess, today. Hope you had a chance to check that out. I'm going to cover that a little bit as well. XRP radar antennas are up and pointed in the right direction. Without question, Staff Sergeant and Marines is in the building. Thank you for your service, my dude. See, no one is talking about what do the 2020 Olympics and SBI have in common. He says, Japan. <laughs> uh, AML for the entire globe has to take place before June 2020, which also coincides with the Olympics. Great point. Great point that F FATF, right? June 2020. All the major nations, all the G20 people kind of coming together and June 2020 is kind of the implementation implementation date. Absolutely. Great point, Staff Sergeant Marines. Absolutely. Man, I tell you what, I came across some really good interviews with Ken Curson. Uh, courtesy of XRP Darren, which I believe he's Darren Moore on YouTube. Man, I, 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 it's so good. In fact, I joined his Patreon group. And I said in an earlier video, I did it. Uh, I, I mentioned this early in one of my driving videos that, you know, I'm, I'm going to do like three to five different Patreons. Um, these are people that I have been watching, checking out, grabbing information and grabbing content uh, for at least a year. Uh, I, I think Darren Moore, I got, I just recently kind of got tuned into his stuff. He does such great stuff. But, you know, this is kind of my way to give back. Um, to people who give to us, you know, that's the way I look at it. So I'm going to do three to five. Next one on the schedule. Next one on the list is the one and only the modern investor. Definitely will do. We'll be checking his to Patreon out, Patreon group out. Cookie Munt is in the building. How are you? I don't think I've seen you ever in the stream before. Cookie Munt. I would have remembered that name. Hi, Siege. You are live in. What? What is that? Uh, is that Pare or Pare? Yeah, Pare, Max, Jail, not for crimes though. Wow, I'm live there. How about that? How about that? Where is that? Crypto Dread is in the building. Florida tapping in. Uh, glad to see you on stream, brother. John, can't wait till they show Japanese vibes and XRP shots. You and me both, brother. Daniel Peter says hello from Germany. Hello from Germany, huh? Hey, Dan, you guys just see you in the stream, my friend. I see that I have a lot of people checking in from Germany. What part of Germany are you checking in from, Daniel? Derek says, Derek P says, love your work, Siege. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Jacob125 is in the building. What's going on? Hello, folk. Patrick Winland, dude. What's up, Patrick? 
Where are you checking in from, Patrick? Are you checking in from somewhere in the Netherlands? Cookie Munt says Auckland, New Zealand. That's another one of the things that I have been noticing. People have been checking in on that area of the town, that uh, area of the town of the world. I appreciate you being here, Cookie Munt. Hey, Siege. Alex G is in the building. What is up, my dude? Siege, hey, the Pope Francis of the Catholic Church has a meetup with nations, business people, and people with financial power to make the pact of a new economy in 2020. Weird, isn't it? Wow. That's interesting. That is very, very interesting. Okay, Dan Peters was checking in from Bonn. Okay. Very, very good. Very, very good. Good, glad to see you in the stream, my friend. Dubian Two is in the room from you. Oh, you're checking in from Berlin. Wow. Okay. Cool. I love that. Hope you guys are getting the word out about this channel. Love, love to visit Germany one day. Brian Benton says, "Amazing, they conflate Bitcoin bombs, deflate XRP bombs." Perry, oh, it's pronounced Perry or Perry. Okay. Is that right? Okay, thank you, Cookie Man. I appreciate that. Blue Siege Truth is in the building. What, what's up, Siege? Great content early. Oh, thank you, man. The drive videos. I'm glad you liked it, brother. My friend, I should say. I'm glad you liked it, my friend. I don't speak uh, German, but <laughs> Daniel Peters. I did date someone from Germany. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I do indeed, Cookie Mind. I do. I gotcha. Isn't that interesting? How about that? We'll say what's up. Tell them Crypto C says nothing but the best. Nothing but the best from VA, from Virginia, US of A. Yeah, guys. So, so here's some things, right? You guys are probably familiar a little bit with Ken Kersons. I tell you what, uh, again, a major shout out to um, XRP Darren. Uh, he, he came, of course, he put this video on his Patreon, um, I guess a couple of days before he put it out on Twitter. And, um, which is another thing I have to ask you guys as well. If, if somewhere those along, the, uh, along the lines and down in the future, there was a Patreon thing, you know, I'm looking at different ways that if I decided to do that, you know, how to separate it from others and how to make it better, to, uh, you know, kind of different than others. Um, We'll see how it goes. I have a couple ideas, and I'm definitely going to ask you guys first before I even do anything. But I do have some ideas. So anyway, this video with Ken Carson, uh, 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 he was being uh, interviewed on a podcast. Very, very, very interesting podcast. Um, I think it was called Adventures in Finance. I wrote it down. I believe it was called Adventures in Finance podcast, and it might be adventuresinfinance.com. Uh, but, but he was being interviewed there. And I thought it was very, very interesting on a number of fronts. Number one, you know, I first got turned on to Ken Kirsten, to one of the deep dive guys back in the day, CKJ News, right? CKJ Crypto News. And I got first got turned on to him from him. And I think Sam, I am as well. But, I, you know, I thought it was just, you know, I, I thought, cool. Okay, great. Yep. He's, uh, he's real cool with uh, Jared Kushner, who is. You know, the Donald's son-in-law. and uh, Okay, that's cool. And, 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 you know, he's got this, you know, you know, uh, editor of this magazine, the New York Observer um, magazine, um, like a, a newspaper. I think it's all online now. All right, cool. Awesome. That's great. Cool. All right. But I really didn't really kind of kind of put them all together in terms of how significant he was, uh, being that he is on the board of Ripple and just kind of his ties, kind of a deeper look into his ties. And that interview uh, that I listened to on podcast that uh, Darren got somehow <laughs> um, was really important for me because on two really huge fronts, uh, two really huge fronts. Number one, you know, he when he was talking and explaining how he got into the digital asset space, he said, you know, I was I was sitting in, I was talking with Chris, and he was talking about Bitcoin and and digital assets and. I thought, okay, okay, yeah, maybe, okay, great. And then when I went to, you know, to go purchase some, it was ninety dollars. And I, he was said, and he said, you know, I was thinking to myself, ninety dollars. You know, what about all these people Chris was telling about or whatever that got in at a dollar or five dollars? Not, I got to pay ninety dollars now for this thing. And he didn't really say if he went on to buy any or not, but he did say 
you know, a, a, a little time had passed and he had discovered that Chris Larson, now he says his full name. Okay. So number one, when he mentioned Chris Larson the first time, he just said, Chris, you know, I was talking with Chris and he's talking about Bitcoin as digital assets. And I'm thinking to myself, like he's like, he's on a first name basis, right? With Chris Larson back in 2012. And then he, the second time he mentioned him, he said, Chris Larson. And he said that Chris Larson had become the CEO or had started this company called Ripple, right? or, you know, founded, started Ripple. And he goes on to say in this interview that I thought was pretty profound, profound because this kind of speaks to something that happens a lot in the XRP community in terms of haters. He said, you know, I, I went on to invest heavily in that company, into Ripple, and I, I invested into XRP. You know, and you know, I, and he he made a point of stating the fact number one that he did purchase XRP, but number two, he mentioned the price in which he purchased it. Uh, so for me, number one, the fact that he mentioned he purchased XRP was important because you we all you know how we always hear about you well. When we try to promote someone investing in Ripple, the company, they say, well, yeah, of course, they're investing in Ripple, the company, but they're not investing in XRP. They didn't, they didn't invest in XRP. Well, here's a guy, a significant guy, okay, editor-in-chief of the New York Observer, who happens to be uh, the owner of that actual uh, what newspaper is uh, Jared Kushner. He owns it. His brother runs it as the CEO. Uh, but Ken Kirsten is the editor in chief with a major background in political, uh, you know, in the political spaces. He was a political consultant for different potential presidential candidates. And he was also kind of like a speech writer for Trump, for the Donald himself, and also did some public cons uh, public political consulting for him as well. So here's this, you know, and he talked in that interview about. Um, you know, how he, you know, he, you know, he was making some serious money, he said something about the even years, you really, really make big money as a political consultant, this type of thing like that. So he was making some big money. Okay. Um, and he talked about making, investing in the Ripple, the company and buying XRP for half a cent, for half a cent. So number one, the price he got in a half a cent. Number two, he mentioned the fact that he not only invested in Ripple, but he did invest in XRP. But number three, he did, he said his investment into XRP without hesitation, you know, uh, without hesitation. And I think a lot of times people we hear about uh, the Novogratz uh, of the world investing in uh, a particular thing. I don't know if he invested in Ripple or not. You hear people investing in Ripple or Coinbase and or Coinbase. But when they mention Ripple, they never say whether or not they hold XRP. Like uh, the guy from Digital Currency Group. Uh, can't remember his name right now, but the guy from Digital Currency Group, right? He always talks about his investment in Ripple, never talks about XRP. Now, that doesn't take off the table that he did not, in fact, purchase XRP. Maybe the reluctancy or the hesitancy of mentioning that they purchased XRP is that maybe, the, you know, the whole security issue might be a challenge for them. And so as, a, you know, as, as an owner in a company. So maybe that's why they're not doing it. But Ken Kirsten did not hesitate to mention that. And I thought it was really, really um, significant. I learned a lot about Ken Kirsten. And the reason why I'm bringing him up is he came across as a very, very smart, intelligent guy, but also very much in the know, right? And that's important when you sit on the board of a company like Ripple, that kind of, you know, being in the know, you know, rubbing elbows, rubbing shoulders with people in the know. Uh, and so I, he is on the board of um Ripple, and I think it's it's not a small thing to say that the ties that he has with Jared Kushner and the Kushner family and uh, the Donald, I think it's important uh, because for me, it, 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 rem it reminds me of the fact that uh, Donald Trump does know. It confirms for me the fact that he's familiar with Ripple, the company, and the digital asset XRP. I don't think uh, that's a small thing. I think that's a significant thing when you think about it, okay, that the Donald more than likely is intimately familiar with Ripple and XRP, and he mentions Ripple in 
the executive order 13772, right? This new financial, this new financial system where he signed off on. And um, I want to say Craig Phillips is the guy who uh, put that together. And I think that's significantly important. Guys, 48 people in the stream and 29 likes. If you haven't had a chance yet, please collapse that chat. Go smash the like. It helps with the algorithm of the channel for sure. It definitely helps us to continue that streak that TJ Jackson made us aware of as just as many consecutive, uh, well, just as many likes as we have viewers in the stream. But now we have done it consecutively in terms of the amount of streams. So let's make TJ Jackson proud. Let's get this channel out there to the masses so they can enter this digital asset space. And, and more importantly, hopefully, if they're willing, look into the greatest digital asset ever created after doing their own homework and due diligence, of course. Nancy Luton is in the building. How are you, Nancy? Newell Jordan. Great to see you in the stream, my friend. Too many glitches. Something big about to happen, Newell Jordan. Yeah, too many glitches. I agree. That's why I did that video early, like, yeah, I'm not buying that whole glitch thing. Objective illusion is in the building. What's going on, my friend? Good to see you in the stream. Hello, people. How are you? Craig Phillips joining Ripple was huge, says TJ Jackson. Good to see you in the stream, brother. Absolutely was huge, right? So, so as a former secret, uh, what is it, secretary to the treasurer, it is absolutely huge. Blue Seas Truth is checking in from Fayetteville, Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> Nancy Lewis says, I'm waiting at SeaTac Airport to pick up a friend. Can't stay long. Hoddle strong, everyone. Hoddle strong, everyone. Thank you, Siege, and have a great day. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you being here. Absolutely. So I don't think it's, I think you can't overstate that. It's, it's just kind of a, rem a reminder of how significant the people on the board of Ripple are and what they're bringing, what they bring to the project and the overall success of the project. Uh, another guy, and here's the thing here. Let me see if I can pull this up. So just in case you haven't had to, to listen to it. So just in case. Yeah, so just in case you hadn't had a chance to listen to it, I'm going to show you where it is so you guys can go check this dude out. And even look, perhaps, look perhaps to even check out his Patreon group. So here it is right here. It's a uh, Ripple board member, Ken Kirsten, the Trump whisperer. <laughs> the Trump whisperer. <laughs> great listen to, guys. It's only like 10 minutes and 43 seconds. Absolutely great listen to. His channel on YouTube is Darren Moore Jr. Definitely want to go check that out and the other video that i wanted to point out to you guys that i spent some time checking out was uh greg kidd right here now this is a this, i don't know how this guy got this uh interview um his channel is called emmanuel daniel i was like his second sub so you may want to go check that out but this was a conversation with greg kidd founder of global id and he mentions Ripple, the, Ripple and XRP consistently in his video, consistently. And I think that this is an important thing to check out and kind of do your own homework with Greg Kidd as well. Uh, because of his ties to Silicon Valley. Like we're, we're talking this Greg Kidd guy is, a, you know, I, like a mainstay in the Silicon Valley space. Like over three years, right? Over three years in the pay, in the space at Silicon Valley, and I think that's really, really important. Did it freeze up again? No, really, really important to to make note of that. And so here's a guy. Again, he's another guy who um, invested in Ripple, but he also invested in Coinbase as well. Now he and and he was uh, Greg Kidd was a chief financial risk officer at Ripple at one time. Uh, he's no longer there. He's really focusing on global ID. But the fact that this guy, who is um, a big Silicon Valley guy, um, you know, had a spot at Ripple, and that interview is constantly talking about 
um, to, you know, it's going to be two people, two companies, you know, five. What he said is there's going to be five major players in the, in the tech space. Um, and they're not all necessarily going to come out of Silicon Valley, but they're going to be major players that come from Silicon Valley. He said it's probably going to be two that come from there. And I think he's probably saying the two are the two that he invested in, which is Ripple and Coinbase. OK, so I thought that was really, really important. But what he kept mentioning over and over and over again was Ripple in that interview. And he kept talking about, um, you know, the things that they're looking to do and, and, and different stuff like that. And so I thought that was important. But here's a guy who is what, you know, when you listen to him on that interview, you can tell that he's a very, very smart guy. And you can tell that he's like two or three steps ahead of catching that next big thing in the Silicon Valley space, you know, catching that next big thing. He does, and he does allude in that interview too about, you know, how well he did in the digital asset space, right? Um, I know Ken Carson did that as well, really, really alluded to that fact that he did really, really well. In fact, he said he did really, really well there than in any other thing that he had been doing. You know, Ken Carson said that. So, um, but yeah, so that Greg Kidd interview was really, really, this, this guy interviewing him was uh, an interesting character to say the least. But guys, here again, I want to point out Greg Kidd, Greg Kidd, major, you know, major person from Silicon Valley, at, you know, at one time a chief risk, uh, chief risk financial officer at Ripple, really, really touting and promoting the company as a whole. Obviously, was an early investor in the company as well. But he came across as a guy that was really two or three steps ahead. I'm still thinking and still wondering, where is the other tie with Greg Kidd? Is it with PolySign? Who in the channel knows? What's the other tie uh, that Greg Kidd, besides being the chief financial risk officer at Ripple, what was the other tie? Does anyone know? Anyone know? Can anyone tell me what that is? I thought... And the reason why I'm thinking poly sign, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I know he's he started something called Global ID, but for some reason, I thought there was some other kind of tie there. He did mention in that interview that he thought that the ID, um, the ID part of what Ripple is trying to do was important. Uh, he mentioned something about. You know, um, leaving it to the banks to kind of, you know, you know, take the uh, take the baton and run with this whole ID thing and expecting the banks to do it is is probably it's not an ideal way of thinking. Uh, and so that's why he kind of went out until he's focused primarily on payments. That's his thing. Um, but he believes that ID is that next thing. That's the space he's moved in is a uh, global ID and, and making sure that's taken care of. You guys are really crushing it, man. 53 people, 41 likes. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I appreciate that. But anyone know any other kind of ties for Greg Kidd? Okay, Poly sign and Schwartz. So Staff Sergeant, okay, says do not know. I, yeah, I thought, I know Schwartz is with Poly sign. I, I thought Greg Kidd was somehow, an, in, in addition to being at one time a chief, financial risk offer. So there was some other thing that might tie him with Ripple, whether it be with David Schwartz somehow doing PolySign. I can't really remember. But my point is, Robert Westberg, what's going on, brother? Glad to see you in a stream. But my point to Greg Kidd is, is you know, he's a guy, another guy on um, that was dealing with Ripple that was in the know, really, 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 really in the know, investment in Ripple, an investor in Ripple as well, but really in the know. And so, uh, and what I, why I think that's important is, you know, when people make significant investments in something, they, they know something is happening. They know something happening. And then again, you cannot take off the table that because he did not mention he purchased XRP, that doesn't mean that he did not in the same way that Ken Kirsten did actually purchase XRP. So number one, when you hear people saying, well, you know, you know, they purchased Ripple, but they didn't, you know, they invested in Ripple, but that doesn't mean... It's not necessarily true. And you can now tell them that Ken Kirshen has said that he actually did back in 2012 purchase XRP. So that's important. So these two guys, Ken Kirshen and Greg Kidd, really, really significant um, uh, 
figures in their individual spaces. And I love that Greg Kidd come from the Silicon Valley space. He's had some, he, I used to say he's had a ton of wins in that space. And he's always kind of like two or three places ahead. So you got to think there's a reason he invested in Ripple. And there's a reason why he became chief financial officer at Ripple. And if he was there at Ripple at one time, it's, it's my guess. I don't know. He probably has some XRP, right? He probably has some XRP, right? And so I think that's important to know. We can't forget that. The people on the board at Ripple are significant, right? Mr. Connector says, didn't Greg Kidd start Uphold? I think there's a tie to Uphold. I don't know if he did or not. Let me see something here real quick. Oh, I'm not doing all that. I don't want to sign into my LinkedIn. I always keep mentioning the former risk officer at Ripple. Transforming identity, global ID, CEO, great kid. Looks like a nice spot. That sounds like that's a good interview as well. Okay, there it is as well. So Greg has an unusual background. He was involved from the early from the early days of Ripple, Twitter, and Square, right? So again, ahead of the game, two or three steps ahead of the game, mainstay in uh, Silicon Valley. Unlike most Silicon Valley innovators, though, he's also been a banking consultant and worked for the Federal Reserve Board. These things are really, really important. And it, it kind of reminds us again, I want to remind you of the people that we got um, that come to Ripple to work for Ripple, that invest in Ripple. These are smart, 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 smart people. Very, very smart, you know, and it's important, to, like it's important for us to not kind of forget. Dustin Dio is in the building. What's going on, my friend? Yeah, so think about the investment. You said it was a major investment uphold as well. Okay. So just think about that uh, in early days of Twitter and Square, right? So the dude's kind of been doing his thing. Very important to know. And then the other guy that I wanted to talk to you guys about. He is also an investor in Coinbase. Yeah, I know that Ken Kirsten was investing in both Ripple and Coinbase, right? Staff Sergeant Marine says Ripple has grown to over 30 billion assets in just five years. Whoa. Corey Anderson said, try 2000. You guys must be coming up. I'm glad you, Robert, we're going to try to hook up offline later today, man. I'd like to uh, talk to you a little bit, man, if you have some time about Wealth Wednesday, brother. Justin Dio said he invested like 30 million into Uphold and Coinbase. What? Which are you talking? Greg Kidd did that? Wow. Wow. That's a lot of dough. That's a, that's that, that's discretionary. <laughs> 30 million, right? That's discretionary. That's investment money, right? Like, yeah, I got some money over here. I want to invest 30 million. Oh, I did not know that. That's a big number. Okay, good. Sounds good. Absolutely great. Perfect, man. I'm really looking forward to that. So the other one, and uh, let me show you. 
Um, so there's a Greg Kidd one that I checked out. 54 minutes. Great, great. Uh, great, great read. Now, where is my Craig Phillips? Now, did I listen to Craig Phillips on the Patreon? The like Craig Phillips was the last one I listened to. It might have been, yeah, it might have been in the Patreon group. It might have been in the Patreon group itself. It might, yeah, it probably was. But I, I, I want to share with you guys. Uh, that was a good one too. So here it is here. In a U.S. Department of the Treasury and Crypto and Digital Assets, I watched this one. It was really, really good. And again, this is another guy that's on the board of Ripple. And when you, when you kind of put them all together, that's why I kind of called it a three-headed monster, right? A three-headed beast. When you put them all together and you think about the backgrounds, it's really, really a significant thing. And this was at the D.C. Block um, Blockchain Summit which I don't think was too long ago. I'm, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but it wasn't too long ago, right? And um, it's so important when you think about it. 61 people in the stream, 47 likes. I'm loving what you guys are doing. Definitely appreciate you guys. If you haven't had a chance yet, collapse the chat real quick. Go smash the like and then come back and hang out in the channel. Hang out in the chat. It definitely helps the channel uh, with the algorithm with uh, YouTube. And it also helps to get the videos to stream out to other people so they can, you know, look to enter the digital asset space and take advantage of this, you know, great wealth transfer that's about to take place. I see here. Uh, wow. Dustin Deal says, yeah, he told them they would have to spend it on security and to make sure they ensure their platform for users. Wow, really? Dustin Dio was in the know here about this uh, great kid dude. That's Sergeant Marine says, uh, Dio Polly believes Bitcoin will top out next bull run at above. Okay, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Okay, Bo Polly believes Bitcoin will top out this next bull run at at or above 300k. Something to keep in mind when you potentially take profits in XRP. Absolutely, absolutely, it is. When Mullen is in the building, what's going on? Hey, XRP, how you doing, Wynn Mullen? Marco Polo is in the building. Good evening to you, my friend. I appreciate you being here. Dustin Dio is a legend. How about that? How about that? Told them that he has to invest in security and to make and make sure they ensure their platform for users. How about that? And I tell you, that was a real I'm telling you guys, that interview was really, really good with the great kid. I hope you guys caught um the guy's channel. channel. What? Uh oh. Hold on, guys. I forgot to put my laptop back on. Oh. I thought I. <laughs> That's too funny. I had to. I had the end plugged into the computer but not to the power source. So that, that doesn't work. That doesn't work well, usually. <laughs> right? And so, um, guys, think about the people here. Phillips family, what's going on? Keep up the content. I would love to be a moderator. Phillips family. How you doing, my friend? Where are you guys checking in, Phillips family? 
I don't think I've seen you in the street before. Tell me a little bit about where are you checking in from, Philip's family? Dustin D.L. says, no legend, just research before I stick my money anywhere. But thanks for the love. Absolutely, Dustin. Appreciate you being in the stream, brother. 64 people, 52 likes. We're almost there, guys. We're almost matching as many likes as we have viewers. We're going to keep that streak up, and I'm going to let YouTube know what's up. Hey, we've been. this is the streak we got going on here. Have you ever had that? What? No way. VA, no kidding, bro. I'm from VA. I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm not from VA, but I do hang out. I do reside currently in VA. What part of VA you're in, bro? Or my friend, I should say. So, guys, so, so important to understand that the people at Ripple and the people on this board are significant players, mainstay players. You, you can't just overlook that and say, oh, okay, cool. We're talking about people in sig significant and prominent in their own space from different spaces. Ken Kirsten, um, editor-in-chief of a, a very huge magazine, uh, major political consultant background, major ties to the Donald himself. Uh, Greg Kidd, again, like the, a staple, a mainstead staple in the Silicon Valley space. Okay. And then you got Craig Phillips, you know, the secre secretary to the treasurer. I mean, you can't overlook that and think it's not a big deal. These are people that sit on the board. Never mind Mr. Yoshi Katao. We, I mean, we all know that that dude is the one. We all know that. So these are the people, and I bring this up because these are the people who have our back, who have our back. And don't let anyone tell you, well, they invested in Ripple, but they didn't get in the XRP. Don't let people tell you that. Don't let people try to talk you out of it. Don't let people try to undermine, undermine the value that is XRP. Don't let them do it. That's why we have this channel, so that you guys can level up your XRP IQ, level up your financial space IQ, and level up your digital asset space IQ, because there will be some other winners in this space. Been in XRP since early 2017. First round of XRP Ripple in a Time magazine. Been hooked since that. How about that, Dustin Dio? Today is the biggest down day on the stock market, stock market since the 3rd of December. Really? I didn't even know the stocks were down. I haven't even looked at my TD Ameritrade to see what's going on there. Got some options going on there. I got some puts, some, got some calls and some puts. So we have to see what's up. Diving deep today is the, okay. Diving deep said today is the biggest down day. How about that diving deep? I appreciate you being here, my friend. Is this your first time in the chat, brother? Huh? Staff, my staff sergeant of the Marine says uh, financial advice. Wherever Ripple's execs go to work, you might want to throw mud on their walls, <laughs> like buying stock or crypto. Like you might want you might want to look in the money ground. I think Global ID would be a good place to look at, and PolySign, you know, and PolySign, right? Right, Staff Sergeant Marines, and PolySign, if you could. Like you know, I would just like to know the stuff that we could could get into nancy lewton says isn't today triple witching or is that tomorrow anybody know i do not know is it the last day of the month in december i do not know that yeah everyone that's what people will be more moon soon it lo really looks like something's going to significantly is going to happen so many important things are happening in january and I do believe that the G20 people are supposed to be meeting in January as well. So you got January 1, the vocal rule. Staff starts and research groups, but correct, but PolySign stock isn't available yet. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I would love to find out where the different executives or whatever are, are in or, you know, have been at Ripple or currently at Ripple that have other things going on. Because, again, for me, I definitely have some money gram stock. You know, that was an obvious one for me. But I don't know the different things that the other execs have done. But I, I like the fact. And here's another good thing that I want to say about Ken Kersen. I feel like. 
I feel like there's a like there's a there's a this is a guy that if you happen to run into him would give you a few minutes and talk to you like it's just a normal everyday conversation. Ken Kirsten feels like that to me. And I and actually Greg Kidd feels like that way to me as well. Like approachable. And I think that's important. Because they're both fans of the digital asset space. And I think that's really, really important. Oh, by the way, guys, got the trademark and stuff down. So the t-shirts, the hoodies are on the way. I got to tell you, I'm a little concerned about, you know, one of the popular ones, which is Teespring. Yeah, I don't know. What do you, it seems, I don't know. I don't know if people use Teespring because it's kind of simple. I have to find out. I got a really good friend who has a t-shirt, um, t-shirt hoodie business uh, in the health and wellness workout space. So I, I got to kind of see what he's done and what he's doing. Uh, we, we chatted for a bit, but then he didn't get back to me. Kind of, some kind of dude, huh? I'm calling this dude my dude. He didn't get back to me. What's up with that? He's got a very successful business. So, but what is up with this T-Spring? But I just wanted to let you guys know, hey, wherever the real Rick G is, I hope he's not mad at me. Uh, that is coming. Those are coming. Got that stuff trademarked, so those shirts are coming. All right, what you guys got going on here? <laughs> Brian Benton is like, I don't know, but I heard it's a quad witching. <laughs> oh, diving deep. No, I've been tuning in a lot more since a couple of weeks ago. Okay. More more since a couple of weeks. Like the interaction you have on your channel. Keep up the good work. Oh, my, all right, brother. I appreciate that, man. And it's very, very kind of you to say, Diamond Deep. I appreciate that. Triple Witch is the third Friday of each quarter. Okay. Well, if it's a Friday, it can't be today then. I don't remember when the triple witch was supposed to happen, Nancy Lou, and I don't remember when that was. Triple witch is the third Friday of the last month of each quarter. Okay. Well, isn't December the last month of this quarter? And that that would mean that is it this Friday? No. That means it already happened. 7, 14, 21st. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that mean that it already happened? Third trip. Devon says triple, which is the third Friday of December, March, June, and September. All right. So we're waiting for the March one, right? Because the third Friday has already happened for December. I appreciate you guys to let me know about that. I did not know. Don Cornelius the third. What is going on, my dude? I need moon. We all do, bro. I hear you. John Edwards says, hi, Siege. What have I missed? Nothing, brother. Not much. We've been talking about the three-headed monster that is Craig Phillips, Ken Kirsten, and Greg Kidd. All participants in, uh, well, two of them investors in, in Ripple. One we know is investor in Ripple and XRP, and we, of course, we know uh, two of them sit on the board currently for Ripple, and one was the chief risk financial officer for Ripple. So I just wanted to kind of bring out and remind people of uh, how significant the people are at Ripple, not just the employees or the executive team, but the people that sit on the board. Rasheem, be wealthy. See, what's going on, Rasheem? Appreciate you being here, bro. Staff Sergeant Marine says, I expect XRP price to seriously rise in June in conjunction with the 2020 Olympics and when the global mandatory for AML has to take place. I hear that, bro. Makes sense to me. Uh, makes sense to me. When Mel said, guys, like and subscribe. We haven't had a chance to do that yet. 74 people on stream, 59 likes. We are almost there. It's just as many likes as we have viewers. Let's make that happen, guys. If you have, if you didn't smash that like on the way in, just collapse the chat real quick. Go smash the like button. Then come back in. Philippe Greg Gregoff, have you guys been leveling up your financial IQ and exit strategies? 
or are we ready to give it straight back to Uncle Sam? Nice, Philippe. Where are you checking in from? Are you checking in from like the Netherlands or Sweden? Happy New Year, Siege. Philippe, where are you checking in from, my friend? That's a great point. Leveling up your and that's what we. So I hope you are familiar with the Wealth Wednesdays. What we're going to be doing, Philippe. Wealth Wednesday. Are you familiar with that? We're going to be doing those first one is this Wednesday. We're going to have two awesome people from the community call in and help with that as well. Wayne Mullet, thank you. That's right, that's right. John Edwards says, Siege, the more this plays out, I am more certain it's a price set, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And never ever sleep on that NASDAQ. You guys have heard me talk about that, you know, they didn't put the NASDAQ liquidity index together for no reason, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. There's a reason for that. And I don't think it's any small coincidence that CMC, uh, you know, otherwise known as coin market cap, has decided to put together this new liquidity metrics for determining the value of these different coins and where they rank. I don't think that's a coincidence. And then of course we what do we do what do we find out from, from one of the deep divers in the community? I think it was Mickey B. Fresh, who came across a GitHub that listed ECB, the European Central Bank, XRP and coin market cap in the same GitHub. I don't think that's a coincidence to you. <laughs> I, I, I always joke around and say that, you know, the people from Ripple or the people from, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to say, the IMF, I don't know, whoever you want to say, I'm sure they're saying, what in the world is up with this XRP community? What is up with them? They find everything. Dudes, not only did we find the Bank of America patent, Mr. Michael McDaniel from the Investment Perspective Telegram chat found that. Mickey B. Fresh comes up with stuff time and time and time and time again. Then he, find, he finds this GitHub with ECB, XRP, and uh, CoinMarketCap mentioned on this, Git, on this GitHub. They, they must be like, we can't keep anything <laughs> away from them guys. If it's out there, they're going to find it. They are going to Philip Greg. Oh, Melbourne, Australia. Well, appreciate you being here, Philip. Philippe, I appreciate you being here, bro. Welcome to the stream. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, if you're liking the channel, you can certainly do that. And don't forget to ring the bell, my friend. <laughs> Diving Deep says XRP will be used out of necessity, not because the banks just like it, they will just need it. Absolutely. It ain't going to matter if they like it or not, my friend. They will have to use it out of necessity. Out of necessity. And oh, by the way, I mentioned this in the beginning of the stream, but did you guys check out the Digital Nomad Investors latest video? It's really, really significant. It's really, really significant. Let's get into a little bit of that. Philip Gregor says, yeah, I'll have a look, mate. Awesome. I appreciate that, bro. Rasheen B. Wealth says, I truly believe Ripple will be the Amazon or Apple, even a fintech. Without question. It, it, that, that's the statement that they made with that seed funding round, <laughs> in my opinion, that $200 million seed funding round. Tyler, 1013. Hey, seed. Good morning from Sydney, Australia. Wow. Good morning, Tyler. I believe 2020 will make us some very happy people. Absolutely. Hey, I appreciate you being on the stream, my friend. If you haven't had a chance to smash the like button, just collapse the chat, go smash the like. And if you like the channel, subscribe and ring the bell. <laughs> Exciting times ahead, no doubt. That's right. Yes, Dustin Dio, smart investors do find everything because if there's nothing there, it's a bad investment. John Edwards says the reason it's a price set there is, is so many who want switch want to switch it on and light up light them up in quarters, so 19 cent won't cut it without question. Just you know, and, and that's kind of been our thing. Um, 
And I'm going to let you listen to something that the Digital Nomad Investor said I think is very, very significant. If you haven't hit the likes or sub to see his channel, you don't like my <laughs> staff stars and rings. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. FX John Edwards says FX market, uh, FX market. Do you think for a second they are going to use this on 19 cents? No way, brother. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Brian Benton, one year we'd be smiling, three years we'd be retiring. I hear that, man. Jake from State, what's going on, man? How you doing, my friend? I don't think I've seen you in the stream. Thanks, Holden. XRP will be um, XRP free me. Is that the one where he's? I see you put a link there. Is that the one where he's talking about um, Madame Lagarde uh, when he covered an article from like two years ago? That's the one I was kind of um, pointing to. XRP free me. Banks holding XRP will be like trying to hold water with the hands. Uh oh, it will continually flow, making it the most liquid asset in the world. I love that. That's a great point, Jake. Great point. Phillips family says, please hide on when XRP gets $5. <laughs> this, has a, this asset has great potential. Absolutely. XRP Live is in the building. We choose, we choose to go to the moon, not because it is easy. <laughs> Buy because it is hard, but because it is hard. JFK, absolutely. One of the greatest statements ever. One of the greatest statements ever. So let's go over this thing from DNI real quick. And this is, again, this is old 2017, I believe. You have September 29, 2017. IMS Lagarde says digital currencies could boost its own SDR. Global uses of the IM, uh, IMS into house currency, the special drawing lights, could get a boost from growth of digital currency. The fund's ex-managing director, Christine Lagarde, said on Friday, it is not a far-fetched hypothetical, Lagarde told of a conference hosted by the Bank of England when she raised the prospect of the SDRs partly, partly supplanting major international currencies, currencies such as the dollar and euro. If the, two, if the two were to come together, the digital acceleration and facilitation and the ge geopolitical situation, that would, that would be propitious, propitious for relying on an alternative, Lagarde said. All right, that's cool. Since World War II, the dollar has, in practice, formed the backbone of the global financial system. The IMF has previously said that the digital currency, best known, which is Bitcoin, could play a greater role. But we also know that Madeleine Lagarde has said, not the Bitcoins, right? They play a greater role in future cross-border transactions and in countries where the domestic currency is unstable. And I think this is an important statement that she's saying that this is something that can not only be used in cross-border, but in countries themselves that are pretty unstable. So she's talking about this ESDR, if you will, that can be used in two different kind of facets. U.S. dollars are used officially or unofficially as a currency in many countries with a historic economic instability. And Lagarde said the digital currencies could become a better alternative to paper banknotes. So again, this is in 2017 when she mentions this at this conference for the Bank of England. And it's important to understand that she, she was thinking about it. And she's been really kind of laying the groundwork, I think, for it to happen. And so if she has these same thoughts while she's at the IMF, she has these same thoughts now that she's at the ECB, right? However, she added that existing digital currencies have technical problems. Well, that's not XRP, which, was, which, which need to be involved. Interest in the SDR got a small boost last year from the addition of China's yuan to the basket used to calculate it. Speaking of the Chinese yuan, man, are they, they're doing some things over there. Digital currencies could potentially join in a future set of regards. So let me, I want you guys to check this out. So hold on one second. Let's do this. And I want you to, even though I know you guys are going to check this out on your own, I want you to really listen to this. Uh, what is this, JBL? Check this out. Times have changed. 
So should your bed. Hold on one second. IMF Lagarde says digital currencies could. I got minute. I got it marked here. I'm seeing special drawing right based on or backed by ESDR. Right there. Oh, wait a minute. In digital instrument. All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> I use that instead of one moon. I say one mullet. I love it. All right, so check this out, guys. I don't feel like it's really dark in here all of a sudden. We've called an ESDR. All right there. Oh, wait a minute. In 2018, we called it right there. <laughs> Sorry. Gloating a little bit. Join them together. Join the digital asset, like a, such as XRP, together with the SDR. you got a stable security blanket financially that the globalists want to use. Once you announce that you're creating a new financial instrument and you put that digital asset at 19 cents that you bought it for with the into a new financial instrument called the ESDR and announce that that's what you're going to use for some sort of global debt relief, be it governments, central banks, what have you. Natural market forces would strongly suggest that 19 cent digital asset is going to shoot up in price. Now you have a new financial instrument, the ESDR, that has gone up significantly in value, and you're able to pay off significantly more debt with that new financial instrument called the ESDR. Also, in this statement, talking about relying on an alternative. What I mentioned in my XRP inverse solutions theory, that as the traditional financial solutions become excluded from possibility of being used because the uh, debt loads are so unsustainable and so severe, uh, be it countries, corporations, uh, or just globally in general, that non-traditional solutions increase inversely in possibility. Digital assets fall under that non-traditional. So that's the thing, guys, right? And so what he's saying is that, you know, the people from the IMF, right, but the people from the IMF have this option and have been discussing, right, this option of just creating this new financial instrument, which could be called an ESDR, and the reason why he's been kind of going down that path for a while, for the last uh, year and a half or so, is because he had a talk with one of the probably most recognized geopolitical figures in the world, and his name is Jim Rickards. And Jim Rickards had told him that the IMF was, in fact, looking into this new financial instrument very similar to an ESDR. He didn't know what he – so he said they were looking to use a digital asset that would work alongside of the SDRs. And he said that he did not know if it was going to be XRP. He was familiar with it, but he didn't know if it was going to be XRP. This is back in, prior to 2018. And so XRP, uh, the digital nomad investor has been kind of taking from that and moving forward with the XRP manifesto, but also talking about this, um, how X, our XRP could be used alongside the SDR. And talks about the different currencies in there now, whether it be um, the yuan, the U.S. dollar, the euro, and whatever other one that might be in there. And what he was saying is that if they get something now at 19 cents, he says that this ESDR would act as or serve like a booster to booster the value of the current currencies in the SDR basket. And that they, that, and because of that, he he expects or he believes that this announcement that the IMF might make 
that this is the new financial instrument that they've created and why they've created would really send the price of XRP out, you know, off the chain. It would just to the moon, right? Type of deal, right? And because of that, the value that's in that basket is now significantly more than it was when it was at 19 cents. It already has a significant value already, but it will be significantly more. But if you're tying it to this, um, this, to this basket, they can use it to pay off debts. And he says there's something, uh, there's this thing in the article of agreements that they have where that, they, you know, that they've done this before in the past where they've, uh, quote, unquote, allotted the SDRs, SDRs out to different nations and different countries for whatever the reason. And so they are able to do that again, but they just have to figure out a way how they can tie something in that they have done in the past with SDRs and now tie that together in conjunction with an, a quote unquote ESDR. Guys, 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 you are killing it, man. I, man, I appreciate you guys really taking the time to do that. 76 people on the stream, 69 likes. We are almost there. Man, I appreciate you guys doing that. I really do. But that's just the possibility, right? And I, I, I love shouting out DNI because he comes from a different perspective than most of the YouTubers. And it's important for us to kind of be, you know, uh, two or three kind of steps ahead of what the powers that be are going to do so that we can prepare accordingly. Ronnie Early. Hello, Crypto Siege. Hello, Ronnie Early. How are you, bro? Right. And so think about that. He, and he's really just pointing out, you know, this 19 cents thing that's working alongside this basket of SDRs. You know, they make the announcement, they're going to merge them together and, and use and come up with this new financial interest uh, instrument. And, and we're going to use it to solve debt. We're going to use it to, uh, to, to clear up the bank, the central bank debt, whatever it is that they said they're going to use it. It was going to raise now this value. It's going to raise that value. And because it raises the value now that SDR has bigger value, there's more of it. And it only makes good sense. And you guys have seen me seeing this channel before and when I did other stuff about the IMF. And how they're saying that they felt like the SDR has been seriously underutilized. You remember that article, the IMF blog that I read to you guys about them saying how the, I, the IMF had been saying as of late, as of late, that they feel like the SDRs have been severely underutilized. So it's just really kind of speaking to what DNI is saying. This is it's just kind of confirming what Jim Rickards, Jim Rickards was saying, who is you know, again, a geopolitical giant, a dude that is just in the know from way back in the day and is still significant and relevant in what he does today. Mentioning that. So I don't know how he and uh, DNI know each other, but apparently they do. So it's very, very important to know. So you, get, you got XRP, um, uh, a potential with the IMF being used. You got XRP all over cross-border transaction. You got XRP all in the banking system. Uh, you got it all over MoneyGram in real-world use case business enterprise. Guys, we're in a great spot. We are in a great, great spot. Again, if you haven't checked out that video from DNI, uh, you definitely want to go check that out. Just 10 minutes. Level up your XRP IQ. So that you understand, level up your financial space IQ. Guys, I'm, I'm going to mention this on every stream going forward until I don't know when. But guys, if you guys are excited about Wealth Wednesdays, Generational Wealth Wednesdays, if you guys are excited about that and you're, and you're going to participate in that, you're going to tune in and check in, I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to go get this book, Strangers in Paradise. Do not be misled by the title. It is about generational wealth. It is about dealing with generational wealth. I don't want to give the book away, but you want to grab this book. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see when we do our first stream, our second stream on Wealth Wednesdays, our third streams, how many people. I want to see the name because I'm going to ask you guys to tell me if you got this book. And I, and I want to see I got it. Right. I want to see John Edwards. I got it. I want to see Wynn Mullet. I got it. I want to see Ronnie Early. I got it. I want to see um, Philippe Gregoff. I got it. I want to see Rasheen be wealthy. I know I'm going to see it from that dude. Rasheen be wealthy. I got it. I want to see Nancy Luton. I got it. I want to see you guys' names say that you got this book. It's on Amazon. It's less than 20 bucks. 
I'm telling you, this is a must. If you are serious about wealth, generational wealth, if you're serious about not only getting it, but keeping it, you're going to grab this book. It is by um, James Grudman. It's written by two PhDs. Okay. Very, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. I'm excited to be able to see how many people are going to grab this book. Ronnie Erlen says, I'm going to grab it. I hear that, bro. I hear that. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm only like 20 pages into this thing, and I'm telling you, I am, I am like, I'm, you want to talk about an eye opener. You want to talk about a ra- reality of a situation. It's so important. So, Ra- Rasan, Rasan says, got to get that book. Absolutely, my friend. Got to get it. Again, it's called Strangers in Paradise. How Families Adopt to Wealth Across Generations. Look at that, man. Look at it. Look at you guys are killing it. 72 likes, 71 people in the stream. You guys are killing it. I appreciate that. Crypto delivery is in the building. If you haven't had a chance yet to, to collapse the chat and go smash the likes, I definitely appreciate you guys doing it. It helps with the algorithm on YouTube. Most importantly, it gets this channel out to other people that are looking to get into the digital asset space. And hopefully, we'll get them to consider looking into the greatest digital asset ever created, which is XRP. John Edwards says, I'm on it, buddy. Cheers. All right, brother. We'll see you. Definitely go grab that book. I'm telling you guys. Ronnie Earl says, wealth is something I've been searching for the last 20 years. Brian Schreyer is in the building. Brian Schreyer, what's going on, my dude? Did you miss me talking about Wealth Wednesdays? Hey, Siege. Definitely want to grab that book, Strangers in in Paradise, uh, Brian Schreyer, by James Grubb. Men, G-R-U-B-M-A-N, Strangers in Paradise. If you're excited about Wealth Wednesdays, if you're excited about Generational Wealth Wednesday, we're going to have two people from the channel calling in. You you definitely want to miss that. You definitely do not want to miss that. I will let you know of the time. It will either be 3.30 or 7 o'clock, it's looking like. But I will definitely let you know. He says, yeah, I missed that. Yeah, I'll check it out online. Absolutely, bro. You got to get it. If you're serious about generational wealth and you definitely want to be tuning in to our generational wealth Wednesdays. Eastern time. Yes, Ronnie, early Eastern time. Yep. Yep. It's going to be either 3.30 Eastern time or 7 o'clock Eastern time for Wealth Wednesdays. That's just for Wealth Wednesdays. Generational Wealth Wednesday. So I'm excited about this. 74 people on the stream, 75 likes. You guys are killing it, man. I love it. I definitely appreciate you guys doing it. Mr. Wendell, yo, Siege, what was the price of the glitch? What was the price of the glitch? Well, um, one guy who actually, a friend of mine, my dude who, um, and I won't mention his name until he says it's okay to mention his name, but he's actually in Japan. And he was telling me that his, his dudes were telling him it was over 800,000 yen. So you can kind of convert that into U.S. dollars. He didn't see it. He said his boys were telling him that. When Mello says crypto sees, I just ordered it, bro. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is exactly what I'm talking about. As soon as you hear about it, you go get it. That tells me that you're serious about generational wealth. This is an important time in our, in our lives, guys. It's a really significant p- important time in our lives because it's not just about getting the wealth, right? Just like my dude who checked in here said, it's now, you know, did you level up your XRQ and your exit strategy? Exit strategies are cool, but I want to know, I want to talk wealth strategies. Like once we get it, when we moon, what are we doing with it? And you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily get the tens of millions from XRP, although that's very possible. Okay. You can, um, you know, get the one, two, three, five million. You can get the up to a million and turn that into generational wealth. You just have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for it. Brian Schreyer. Oh, thanks for the five dollar super chat, brother. I appreciate that. You're always contributing contributing to the channel, man. I appreciate that. Did you see Kimes' video speculating R3 and Ripple Swift merge? Yes, I did see that, Brian Schreyer. I did see that, in fact. Yep. Diving deep, buying a Tesla. <laughs> I hear you. Mr. Wendell said that's 7,348. Damn, he's right. And what's in, uh, my dude uh, that actually lives in Japan who says that, um, by the way, the U.S. in terms of payments and accessibility to digital assets is way, way behind as compared to Japan. Way 
behind. Now, this 3,000 ATMs news, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Kimes is um, Rasheem. Brad Kimes, Investment Perspective channel on YouTube. Good content creator, man. Definitely want to check his channel out. Dubin2 says, I want to start my online marketing business here. Absolutely. I, I hope that you do. I hope that you do. I hope that you do. Absolutely, guys. So, wow, really, merger? Well, Staff Sergeant, well, that's, you know, that's, they were looking at that as a possibility, um, Staff Sergeant and the Marines, because Ripple coming across to so much money. And, uh, and let's just face it, R3 is not doing as well. Um, their C rounding was nowhere near as successful as Ripple's. I don't know about how the whole Swift thing would look or, what, uh, or whatever. I don't know how that would look. Uh, but my guess is the more prominent people continue to invest in Ripple, the company, um, it, you know, it feels like it's just a matter of time. You know, and, and they're certainly looking to do acquisitions. As long as Mr. Katow is on that board, I can promise you that, you know, they got a good strategic advantage to them. Um, in terms of interpreting, analyzing, searching, and seeking, and finding out the right moves, and then being able to execute on those moves, on those acquisition moves, strategic partnership moves, because Mr. Katow is without question the one <laughs> when it comes to doing that, right? Rasheen B. Wealthy says, well, book will be here Monday. Got my wife looking forward to reading it as well. I hear you, my friend. That is what it is about. I know Ms. Crypto C just like, hurry up, hurry up, <laughs> and get done reading that. You know, uh, I should have ordered two. I should have ordered two. That's generally what I do is I order two so she can read. Because she, 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 man, she goes through some books, man. She is, I don't know, she's, kinda like, she's so smart. She goes through books. I'm like, I'm writing it down. I'm reading over the pages again. I'm highlighting it, <laughs> you know. Oh, man, I, I make sure I get the most out of it. Tyler, 1013, I believe they will have to price that XRP. Wow. Yeah. At the next G20 meeting. Now, did you hear the next G20 meeting was going to be in January, Tyler, 1013? Once they all agree on the world financial needs, as they will on gold price as well, everything will work hand in hand. I like it. I like where your head is at, my friend, Tyler, 1013. I like where your head is at. I believe, yes, right. Do be in two with your earnings from XRP, start your own thing. That's exactly right. Why not, bro? Why not be in control of your time? Why not be in control of your own money? Why not? I applaud you for looking into taking the entrepreneurial journey. I applaud you. This is a great statement. I have to read this again. Tyler 1013 says, I believe they, in parentheses, will have to price set XRP. At the next G20 meeting, once they all agree on the world financial needs, as they will on gold price as well, everything will work hand in hand. I agree with you a thousand percent, Tyler 1013, because I think XRP and gold are are really kind of tied together in some some uh, in some way. Uh, someone commented in my in one of my videos. He said he said XRP to fiat. He said XRP to fiat and gold to the yuan. That's what he believed. And that XRP to fiat is, is falling exactly along the same lines as what Madame Lagarde was suggesting, right? Those are fiat dollars in that basket, right? And it's falling in line with DNI is saying as well. And we already know that China's already, you know, it's really looking like China is going to do this thing with gold <laughs> and the yuan, yuan, right? Really looking like that. Yep. Staff speculation, but you know how that goes. Probably and hopefully CJ probably knows more. <laughs> Katow has been wanting an R3 MIPPLE merger. That's exactly right, Brian. Katow has been wanting an R3 and MIPPLE and Ripple MIPPLE and a Ripple merger since 2017 without question. And what, what Mr. Katow wants? Hmm. Doesn't it feel like Mr. Katow gets? Like what Mr. Katow wants? Mr. Katow gets. It doesn't mean that the businesses won't continue to operate in their own kind of way. But if he can he can help them come together and make sense of it all. 
Everyone, everyone wins that way. Guys, 83 people in the stream, 81 likes. You guys are doing it. You guys are doing it, and I appreciate that. Uh, when Mel says next year 20 is November 2020, long time out. Okay, so it's not in January. I know on the Kimes uh, stream, um, he had mentioned that he thought it would as in, uh, might be one in January. Okay, so no, no luck on that one. Okay. Brian Schreier says, smash the likes and subscribe for Siege. Absolutely. Yeah, and so it, it is. It's, it's, it's one of those things that we don't know. But when you read the, I, I feel like these articles, the IMF coming out, they're constantly coming out, coming out about um, uh, digital currencies and what they're going to be doing with these currencies, the CBDCs. Um, this article from 2017 about Madame Lagarde talking about um, you know, digital assets boosting the SDR. That is such a strong word, you know, boosting. Do we know for certain? No, but it does say that this is that these are the things that they're looking into. These are the things that they're looking into. And the reason why it feels like XRP is because we know that it's on this XRPL, and we know that that one of the things that the powers that be in these governments and central banks are going to want is they're going to want to, they don't, they don't want to just use something that's fast and saves money. They want to use something that can keep them compliant and keep things safe. So they're going to want something that, that it's KYC as AML and as CFT. They're, the reason why they're talking about that. And Craig Phillips talked about in that speech that I showed you on the, on, on Darren Moore's Patreon uh, when he talked at the DC Blockchain Summit, he mentioned KYC, AML, CFT, and how important that was, right? Because if we get ourselves in a situation where it's not that, if we choose to kind of go some side direction where it's not all three of those things, it's not going to work. It's just going to blow up. The digital asset thing will just blow up in our face. We need something that when it's used, it's going to be KYC, AML, and CFT. And that's why I believe that the ILP and the XRPL and the XRP, they go hand in hand with one another. They go hand in hand with one another. XRP, greatest digital asset ever created. Saves money, saves time, free ups up this notion of a vulture account. Can help solve the, the global liquidity uh, challenge that's going on. You put it on, it's on the XRPL. You can put other things on this XRPL as well. And so if they're on the XRPL, gold, real estate, anything you want to put on that digitally, it then becomes KYC, AML, and CFT. Then you have the ILP where other networks might have their own version of the XRPL. They get connected to the XRPL as well. Interoperability. It just, they go one hand in hand in hand. And the fact that Ripple decided to gift, created this ILP and gift it to the W3C, which is the people who essentially run the internet, is, is a talking point, is a selling point for Mnuchin, for Powell, for the Donald himself, President Trump, to share with the world about this company, this good old US of A company that created the ILP, that created the XRPL that created XRP. So the Donald is like, okay, yeah, sure. Sure, go ahead and walk away from the dollar as the U.S. reserve currency. We have another thing. We have another thing. We have another thing. And here's the thing. We don't know if they're going to do it. We just know that people like uh, Putin and, and Xi or Xi, from China and, and a couple other places are talking about working, walking away from the U.S. dollar and working around other ways. But if we get this ESDR that boosts the value of these SDRs, and now we, we and then we get we get a country to use XRP in some way uh, that, as a more stable currency, or even to use the XRP that's tied to the digital assets. XRP is a good old U.S. of A. created, born and raised, if you will, thing. And the Donald has a plan. And he's boldly stated, okay, boldly stated, boldly stated he's going to get rid of the debt. How does he plan on doing it? 
How does he plan on doing it, guys? Anybody know? How does the Donald plan on getting rid of the debt? Anybody know? I missed a super chat. Oh, XR0X, $5 super chat. I appreciate that, man, for us. The five euro super chat. Happy holidays and much love. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you always supporting the channel, brother. I really do appreciate that. Let me catch up on some of these chats. Uh, Mickey B. Fresh is awesome. He's doing a video with Times uh, tonight, I think. Is he really? I know. He, I know they just did one, Brian. Did you catch that one? He just. They just did um, a couple mornings ago. While E. Coyote is in the building, Mickey B. brought up a good possibility that SBI Ripple buyout of R three not impossible. Yep, that's when they just they just recently got together, Riley Coyote, right? One morning, like uh, yesterday morning, like nine thirty or or the day before that. Got what already, Joel Benz Israel? What, what did you get already, bro? Tell don't tell me you got that book already. Tell me you got that book already, Joel. I'm gonna give you a major shout out. Joel, did you get that book already? Did you get Strangers in Paradise already from the live stream? I mentioned it. <laughs> Nipple on your mind. <laughs> Ah, nipple. Oops. I know. It's so funny. Greg Williams. What's up, Siege? Glad to catch you live. Greg, I appreciate you being here, bro. Dustin Offman checked in. What's going on, brother? Peace to you, my dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Joel, tell me you got that. Tell me you didn't get that book already. Strangers in Paradise. Did you pick that up already? Guys, Generational Wealth Wednesdays. If you're serious about generational wealth, I strongly recommend you grab this book right here, Strangers in Paradise. And shout out to Sonny Parmar who turned me on to this thing. Sonny Parmar is the guy who, in, in this channel who turned me on to this book. Strangers in Paradise, How Families Adapt to Wealth Across Generations. Let me see if Joel responds to me and said that he got that book. He didn't respond. Dustin Offman, that's correct. China has been stockpiling gold in abundance this last year. Last few years, siege, breaking news, bearable bull, XRP, XRP is IBM enabled and capable of tapping into 1.8 quadrillion derivatives market. So that is uh, the affirmative. I know there was this kind of a hint with IBM in India and so I have to check out the bearable bull. He put a video out on that on Staff Sergeant Marines. Lagarde, right. That's right, Rashim. Almost like she's introducing her him as her bud to many power plays. That's exactly what that was like to me. That's exactly what DNI was saying. It was like a walk in to like a special elite club. He was walking, you know, was it walking them down or whatever they call it? So Staff Sergeant Marine says siege, breaking news, the bearable bull. XRP is IBM enabled and capable of tapping into 1.8 quadrillion derivatives market. I have to check that video out. The stream, man, come on. Yes, sir. Oh, man, yes. Yeah, guys, Joel already got the book. Joel, from the last stream, I guess I mentioned it a couple of streams ago, this dude did not wait. He went out and got the book. Proud of you, bro. Proud of you, bro. Proud of you, bro. You're gonna. I'm telling you, that book is intriguing. You're gonna love it, man. Right, being knighted, says Staff Sergeant Marines. Exactly. That's what it was like. No, uh, we didn't. And like I always say on my streams, we didn't see Dan Larimer from EOS being knighted, walked walked in. We didn't see Charles Hoskinson being knighted or walked in to the special club. Those are great guys, smart guys. They love the space. They want us to win too. They're not the anointed one. They're not the chosen one. They don't have that project. Patrick Parain. Hi, Crypto Seas. How are you? I am outstanding, Patrick. How are you, my friend? See, this is why it's a price set, says John Edwards. Absolutely. Because you got to be. Look, 
We all know it. That price of XRP has to be high. That's the bottom line. And how it gets there is how it gets there. If it's something, some news from the IMF saying um, this is what, which probably it could be, some news from the IMF introducing this new financial instrument, it's the IMF. Who's going to question it? Who's going to challenge them? They put this new instrument together that works alongside the SDR. They already got blog after blog talking about how the IMF's SDR has been underutilized and they need to use it more. Who's going to argue with them? Because now they're just saying, okay, we are going to use it more. And this is our plan. And this is it. And then all of a sudden this price goes up. And then the NASDAQ liquidity index is plugged into this exchange and that exchange, that exchange and now is aware of IMF. Boom. Price set. Why? And who's going to question the freaking NASDAQ? Um, that would be no one. That would be no one. And shout out to the people that are listening in on the stream and haven't checked in in the chat. I know you're out there. <laughs> I know you're out there, and I appreciate you being here. When Mullah says, sometimes bearable bond, bearable bow jumps the gun. So I'm wondering, yeah, hopefully he's got some kind of article or something, right? I suspect Ripple IBM have something cooking. I, the people from IBM have already said that they're open to working with any digital asset project. So why would they not? Of course, they would be open to working with looking into Ripple. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I have to check the video. Hopefully he's got some, you know, he's, he's kind of got some other thing other than just speculation. But the Dustin Offman says the whole repo injection is a definite play. The market would have already tanked if not for it. They plan to spend up all the ease money and then make an abrupt transition to XRP. Great point, Dustin. And, and that falls right along into what uh, the digital nomad investor is saying. He's saying that they're going to, essentially what he's saying, and I'm paraphrasing, is they're going to exhaust all the traditional options route. They're going to exhaust them all. Uh, or as I like to say, they're going to throw everything at it and the kitchen sink. And then when they when they when they're able to say you have tried this you have tried this you have tried this you have tried this, okay, then they can bring in this new different thing, non traditional, which would be the um, a digital asset, some way, shape, form, or fashion, perhaps with the SDR. In the end, XRP is kind of kind of being it. See, siege. So what if IBM is now enabling XRP? XRP that just screwed over Stella Newman's right. If it's true, well, I think Stellar will again. XRP, you know, if they're looking at it, to me, it's still going to be settlement, bridge currency, um, and my thoughts on XLM is it kind of it's going to be this kind of front end of anything. But I also heard from some people in some Telegram chats that Jeff McCaleb has not been playing nice. That's just what I heard that he's been, he's not been playing nice. I don't know. I don't follow Stellar. I don't follow the groups, but there were some people in some other Telegram chats, you know, that are kind of digital asset chats overall. They weren't just Stellar or just Bitcoin or just ETH, just, the, you know, overall digital assets. And they were saying that they were hearing that Jeb wasn't playing nice at Stellar. So with uh, IBM, so maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. Anyone who is new or just joined the stream, please hit the likes. Yes, Brian Shari, thank you. That appreciate that. When Mullen says tonight and tomorrow night will be the proof in the pudding if the market is crashing soon. Okay. Christopher Kwame says I'm late again. <laughs> I'll catch up. Yeah, make sure you catch the re replay, bro. I appreciate you being here, though, Christopher. Leo Brill, Leo Brazil Crypto, what is going on, my friend? I'm here just listening. Learning is the key and patience. Absolutely, bro. Without question. In addition to last post, doesn't mean price increase won't happen beforehand. It will increase by multiple dollars. Absolutely. And I'm going, Tyler, to be honest with you, I'm going on a price increase solely from TA for this bull run from, from two TA guys that I significantly trust in this space who make their living in digital assets. Uh, and may have helped people make tons of money in digital assets. And here's the thing, what they say. One of them says they have a cash out, Tyler, of $9, $15, and $28 XRP. One guy said he, he, he sees it going to as high as $15 or $20. He didn't see it going as high as 28 
But one guy said $9, $15, and $28 XRP. Blockchain backer, I believe he's saying that $50 is during this bull run. If you haven't heard him and check out his channel, you definitely want to do that. Blockchain backer, he's saying $50. So, but I haven't followed him that long to kind of give him the same cred that I would give um, DIY investing and high altitude investing because I've been following them longer and I've seen their TA and I've seen them be right. And I've seen them help some people make some money. <sighs> I bought Charlie's bags in the building. How are you? Who just, what? Who just joined? Oh, I did. <laughs> Glad to have you in the stream, brother. I know that windmill, that 1.5 trade, hundred dollar bills. I, you know, I don't even know. I bought Charlie's bad, says Jeb is a straight up a hole. He's no longer a ripple, partly for this reason. Yeah, this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that he's he's uh he's not playing nice, is what I heard. It's what I heard, so Ryan Hannibal says, and appreciate you being in the stream, Ryan Hannibal. If you haven't had a chance to sub to the channel yet, you can collapse the chat, smash the like, and hit that sub button, brother. Ryan Hannibal says, I think tomorrow we might see something. Okay. Blockchain backer on fire lately, says Win Mullet. Yeah, I saw that I saw this video about the comparison to Bitcoin and John McAfee's thing and how he had did a TA a couple of days before that, and it was the same kind of um, measurements in the fractals, which is what he uses a lot for his stuff. No, Dustin Hoffman, they do not. We are super close. All the recent mainstream reports and interviews, they don't want the average sheep to get in. They do not. They do not. <laughs> Jeb McCaleb wouldn't have meshed well with the club. That's right. Staff Sergeant Marines. And sometimes that's just kind of, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes that's, it's like that. You get that, you get that person who just is smart resourceful mad skills whatever got all the great attributes but doesn't work well with others sometimes you get that right sometimes you get that and jeb might be that i don't know don't know the dude but it's sounding like it Barashim b wealthy says ta combined with all new partnerships banking adoption etc can't imagine nothing less than 70 to 100 dollars next 24 months of high I hear you. And I'm really I'm really basing my thing on the, the $9, $15, and $28 cash out that this guy's talking about during this next bull run. I'm really basing a lot of um, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to be looking for from that. Um, uh, because what they say, to, you know, for me really makes sense. And so that's what I, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about December of 2020. I think it's going to be absolutely it's, – it's going to be the thing where we can finally – it's going to be that thing where we finally know that we know that we know that we know. You know what I mean? We know that we know that we know that we know right now, but now we'll have that price to it. We'll have that thing that says, this is what's happened. This is the thing. We were right all along. We were right all along. And I believe 2020 is going to be the year for that to say, you know what? We were right all along. Dry ice. Is that dry ice or is that grease? Hi, okay, Siege, he says, how do you speak of this to family and friends? feel like I can't speak of all of this daily good news because then I'm asked, what is the price or why did it drop? I have no answers. Yeah, and so I hear you, bro, and that is a, that is a, that is a very common, common thing. And the thing that I would tell you is um, to, to have them look at the history of Amazon and have them look at the history of Google in terms of price. Um, have them look at the uh, the price of Apple in terms of price. Check out the history. You can check out the price history of those. I know for a fact that Amazon at one time was a, had a 94% retracement, right? And so great things tend to do that. And so you got to get them to understand that there's a price and then there's a value, 
right? There's a price and there's a value. And if you if you can check and find out the history prices for Amazon and Apple and Google and those different kind of things, you can help them kind of understand how markets work. The most important thing to look at is the value, not the price. It's the value in a thing. And uh, I mean, that's what I mean, that's what what's his name? Warren Buffett does. Right. He looks at the value and then he looks at the price. He looks at the value and then he looks at, OK, how cheap can I get this thing? And is it significantly undervalued? So he looks at the fundamentals of this company. Is it a, does it have a good CEO? Does it have a good CFO? What's their product line? How are they on accounts receivable? How are their accounts payable? What's their market space? What are they looking to capture? It looks at all those things. And then it looks at the price, right? So that's the thing. And it's, it's, it's a long road to hold to do that. But, you know, you can, you can, you hopefully you can point out at one price, at one point, Bitcoin was less than a dollar. At one point, Ethereum was a dollar or five dollars. You can point to that. You can show them that on live coin watch. Or you can put up, you can pull up the history of each of those coins and you can show them the all time highs. You can even show the fact that Ethereum at one time was $1,400. Now it's a hundred dollars, right? So, it, you, so you can prove your case and that fact things do go up and then they do come back down. You, but you got to be in it to win it. And so it's going to take some time. Just be patient. Don't get discouraged with them. They don't understand. They don't know what they don't know. And you, but you have to understand that. And so what I would encourage you to do is to continue to level up your XRP IQ, continue to level up your digital asset space IQ, and continue to level up your financial space IQ so that you can uh, continue to intelligently articulate um, uh, what you want to articulate. You want to be able to do that. Uh, and, and you'll get to a point to where you're not, you know, shoving in them. You kind of send them in a direction so they can find out for themselves. But you'll know that you just sit in some places where they can learn, you know, kind of on their own. Give them this channel, right? Give them, uh, give them um, the, the modern investors channel. Get them to overall understand the overall digital asset space. And the modern investor will be a good channel for them to tune into, right? Get them to to check out the XRP community members channels like Sam I Am, right? Like Crypto Eddie, right? So they can um, uh, like brag times. Get them to educate, get to level up um, their XRP IQ on their own, right? Send them in a direction where they can get information. But understand that they don't know that they don't know, so you don't want to get frustrated. They just don't know yet. All right, guys. John Edwards says, smash the like and subscribe. This man is up there with the top bloggers. John Edwards, I appreciate that, brother. Sees how will the vocal rule impact us? Be price? I don't know yet. I don't know that, but I think it's going to impact the whole digital asset spaces price, Staff Sergeant Marine. Uh, giving them that opportunity now, they can't hold the digital assets, but they can begin to invest in other hedge funds and other different things like that that do invest or hold um, digital assets. I think it's going to be significant. That's an interesting point, to, uh, Dustin. I respect that. TA isn't really for this market yet. There are no institutional market makers yet. It's fun, for, it's fun but very, very unreliable. We are all fundamentally waiting for regulations. Yeah, and on market and on a market crash. We're definitely waiting for regulations. And you know, and I and I totally get what you're saying about TA. I just I just know from my past experience with these guys that I've been following, um, they've made very good good calls. And so they spent, you know, they spent the last three to five years in this space doing TA and making living, uh, making a living off it. Thanks a lot, Siege. Dry ice. Dry ice. It is dry ice. Dry ice. Thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate that, Siege. Hey, no problem, brother. No problem, brother. Could there be stakeouts on the way up? Stakeouts? What is that, Wild? Oh, shakeouts. Of course. Of course. I mean, and... You know, hopefully not. Hopefully people continue to huddle. I think that I don't see anything wrong with, you know, having some price points to, you know, kind of get a taste and, and take the edge off a little bit of how long we've been in the bear market. You know, I don't see any I don't see any problem with that. Um, I think ultimately um, we're going to be able to live off our digital assets if we have enough of the right ones. Uh, but I don't see anything wrong with, again, taking a little bit of an edge off at, you know, five dollars to ten dollars, just a little bit just to kind of, you know, again, you know, uh, take a little bit of the angst 
from this bear market that we've been dealing with, right? All right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap this video up. I've been going on for quite a bit now. It's been exciting. It's been fun hanging out with you guys, man. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> I bought Charlie League's bat. Uh, who is that said that? Staff Sergeant Marine says, Siege, if we hit 500 plus this year, you got to do a 24-hour marathon stream. <laughs> a marathon stream for the haters. Oh, man, that would be exciting. Wouldn't that be exciting? 500 hours this year. Yeah, I will. Um, I bought Charlie's bag. This for me um, is DIY investing. A DIY do-it-yourself investing, young young kid, and um, high altitude investing. He's not as big on XRP um, as much as the first guy, but he is big on XRP in terms of the charts and what he expects for this year. I mean, he's really good on his TA overall. I mean, and, and high altitude investing turned on do-it-yourself investing to TA and taught them and all this and helped them learn more and all that stuff like that. So so those are the two guys, high altitude investing. Number one for me is DIY investing because I think he has a greater understanding of, of Ripple, the company, and what they're looking to do. And you throw in his great TA. And then the other guy is high altitude investing. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap up this video like I do all my videos and remind you of this to never, ever forget that old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in a street on the same playground that they play in, but we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know. That the battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.